Welcome to an introduction to statistics, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For further information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. In this podcast, we are going to take a look at measuring variability, and we shall be working through one or two examples with you. When we talk about variation in statistics, we are talking about how the data that we have is spread about an average. This is often referred to as dispersion, and that is what we shall be measuring. The simplest of the measures for dispersion is the range. This just means the difference between the largest and smallest numbers in a set. Consider a set of numbers 7, 14, 25, 34, 41, 55, 69 and 88. The highest number is 88 and the lowest number is 7. So the range is 88 minus 7, which is 81. A useful way of referring to dispersion of data is by percentile. Percentiles divide the data by percentage, so that the nth percentile is the value that has n% percent of the numbers below it, and 100 minus n% percent above it. The 70th percentile would have 70% percent below the line. The dispersion can also be divided up into four quarters, known as the quartiles. The interquartile range is the range between the upper and lower quartiles, or the middle 50%. We shall recap from the last podcast for a moment. x minus x bar is the deviation from the arithmetic mean, and x bar is given by the sum of the numbers divided by how many numbers there are. The sum of all the deviations will be zero. So sigma xi minus x bar divided by n will be zero. And sigma i divided by n minus x bar will be zero. The average deviation will be the sum of sigma xi minus x bar divided by n. Let us do a worked example. We will calculate the average deviation of 8, 10, 14, 17, 23, and 36. First of all, we need the arithmetic mean, which will be 8 plus 10 plus 14 plus 17 plus 23 plus 36, divided by 6, which is 108 divided by 6, giving an answer of 18. Now we have the arithmetic mean, we can find the average deviation. For 8, the deviation is 18 minus 8, which is 10. For the next number, 10, it is 18 minus 10, which is 8, and so on. So we have 10 plus 8 plus 4 plus 1 plus 5 plus 18 divided by 6, which gives us an answer of 7.66. For frequencies, when we are looking at groups of numbers, the average deviation is given by sigma, frequency of i multiplied by xi minus x bar, divided by the sum of the frequencies fi. The standard deviation, s, for a set of numbers, x1, x2, and so on, through to xn, is given by the root of sigma, xi minus x bar squared divided by n for the set of numbers from 1 to n. For data that are being grouped by frequency, we can write s as being equal to root sigma fi multiplied by xi minus x bar squared divided by sigma fi, or more simply, s equals the root of sigma f x minus x bar squared divided by sigma f. The variance is given by the square of the standard deviation, so s squared will be equal to sigma xi minus x bar squared divided by n minus 1. For data group for frequency, this will become s squared equals sigma fi multiplied by xi minus x bar squared divided by sigma fi. We will follow a worked example through. The table of data shows the amount of pocket money a sample of children received grouped to give frequency. 
The table also shows the result of xi minus x bar and xi minus x bar squared. The arithmetic mean x bar is given by 100 divided by 6, which is 16.67. Since s, the standard deviation, is equal to the root sigma xi minus x bar squared divided by n, we can now calculate the deviation. This will come to 359.33 divided by 6, which is equal to 59.89. The variance is s squared, so this will be 59.89 squared, which comes to 3586.81. Let us look at a second worked example. A firm has six vehicles whose mileages after a week are given as 560, 120, 302, 48, 220 and 400. We are to determine variance and standard deviation. The arithmetic mean x bar is sigma xi divided by n, which is 560 plus 120 plus 302 plus 48 plus 220 plus 400 divided by 6 which comes to 1650 divided by 6 that gives an answer of 275. To find the variance we take the sum of xi minus x bar squared and divided by n minus 1 this gives us a figure of 35212 for the variance the deviation s will be the root of this number, which is 188. Since s squared, the variance, equals sigma xi minus x bar squared divided by n minus 1, then we can rewrite this as s squared is equal to n multiplied by sigma x squared minus sigma x, then squared, and divided by n bracket n minus 1 close brackets. That means that we can also rewrite s as equal to the square root of n multiplied by sigma x squared minus sigma x then squared and divided by n bracket n minus 1 close bracket. For data group by frequency then s squared is equal to n multiplied by sigma f multiplied by x squared minus sigma f multiplied by x all squared and then divided by n multiplied by n minus 1. The table here shows the weight of a sample of students grouped to the nearest kilogram. For convenience we have also included a column for x squared. The values for x fx squared and for fx need to be calculated and these are shown in the last two columns. The totals for f, fx squared and fx are also shown. To determine the value for s we have to plug in the numbers from the table. Plug in the figures and we have s equal to the square root of 68 multiplied by 358762 minus 4938 squared divided by 68 multiplied by 68 minus 1. This gives us an answer of s equal to 1.727. If the histogram gives a bell shape then a number of general statements can be made. The interval x bar plus or minus s contains 68% of the measurements. x bar plus or minus 2s contains about 95% and x bar plus or minus 3s contains all the measurements. So we could get an approximate value for s by dividing the range by 4. Here we have shown the limits for x bar plus or minus s. And for x bar plus or minus 2s. Finally, for x bar plus or minus 3s. 
This ends our podcast, Measuring Variability, brought to you by Park Bench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. For more information about Park Bench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.